So this is Alan Zapala. He's a durian grower here in Australia. Um, Alan's responsible for starting the durian industry, really. He brought in many of the cultivars. So we're just going to ask a few questions to give a good overview of the Australian durian scene. How about what's your favorite durian variety? <laughs> oh, this Chani we just had is pretty good. The Chani is one of the nicest ones out of Thailand and, and, um, and Ganyao. But we like 24 too, D24 out of Malaysia. It's, it's pretty good. I haven't actually tasted this uh, Musan King, or whatever you call it, this new one, D197. But you are growing it, so you'll get to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably, Rob. You're in a <laughs> good situation. And it depends how, how many. Oh, even even Macrantha that we've had lately has been pretty good. It's been not a bad fruit. So, I uh, don't know. We've got enough there now to start an industry in Australia, I think. You know, we did bring a lot of plants in over the years. So, but Brian Watson actually started off in the seventies. But what happened? A lot of a lot of the varieties he brought in were misnamed, mislabeled. So we really had to go back and start from point A again, and uh, to make sure we had the correct clones. That was one of the big things. And, and that DNA yeah. work you got done. Yeah, that was that was that. good. As part right. of that, it sort of actually grouped them pretty well together. Where, you know, the different Montongs and the different Chinese and stuff, so, but, so, uh, Back in the, well, the 1990s, you and your father traveled to Thailand and Malaysia to bring back durians, right? Yeah, yeah, that was, lucky we did it then because now there's quarantine facilities are closed and it's pretty difficult to do any of that stuff now, so, yeah, we had a RIRDC project to evaluate the, the planting material after that, a five-year project, and out of that, we identified about seven or six or seven clones that were were um, to expand the planting recommended planting list here in Australia. So that all uh, that so, all was good stuff. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to let the listeners know that that was my belly grumbling for <laughs> this child. No, it, was a, it was a seven six seven. Like it all. <laughs> so yeah. how many durian varieties do you currently grow on your farm? Well, before Cyclones Larry and Yasi, we had about, uh, well, before Cyclone Larry, we had a thousand trees of about, or oh, maybe 40 different clones. Wow. But after Larry, we had cut it back to about, took a zero off the end, so, but we still had about maybe 20 clones out of the, out of the hundred. So, but now we've, uh, we're getting, once we've had some really nice fruit this year, we're getting more interested in firing back up and after we've had a couple of visitors from the US come to re <laughs> <laughs> reinvigorate things a bit, re, uh, regenerate or re, uh, whatever it is anyway to uh, get things moving again so that's good. So we've got a lot of gra big grafting program coming up. We've got to try and get D197 propagated up, more Macarantha and more of the ones that are doing okay here. The main thing here is that we mightn't be able to have a perfect fruit, but we've got to have something that's going to uh, uh, withstand our conditions, our, uh, our different weather conditions, because we have cool winters. All right, mm. red prawn, for, for instance, uh, it was one that didn't defoliate even down to six degrees centigrade. So it was a variety that was pretty well suited. Pretty and cold hardy. Yeah, more hardy, yeah. And also the Macranthas and the D197s, they seem to be uh, more spreading open sort of trees, which the two Category 5 typhoons didn't affect as much. So okay. so we've got to go for maybe in cricketing terms an all-rounder, somebody, some a tree that's good uh, agronomically and uh, you know, fairly good taste-wise. It's, it's nice that the Macrantha survived and is pretty addictive too. Yeah, yeah, it's a different, it's hard to describe why Macrantha is like that. It's, it doesn't look that uh, inspiring, but it's, it's, you seem to just start to eat it and eat it and eat it and right. you just keep going, so. I don't well, know, that's what Rob said anyway. I don't know, I think I might have got conned here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'd say it looks really nice from the outside. <laughs> And then you open it, and there's this little moment of disappointment, like, oh yeah. no, it looks unripe, or it looks yeah. kind of hard. Yeah. But and then you touch it, 
and yeah, then you eat it. And it's, and it's a good size because here in Australia, you'd be looking at selling wholesale for around ten dollars a kilo. So you don't want a, a five kilo montong fruit or something that's. And also, the bigger the fruit is, the bigger the arils, and consequently, the more problem you have with the ripeness, the ripening process in the arils. So we want to try and have a fruit that's around. Uh, you know, one and a half, two kilos, where it's going to retail for fifteen to twenty dollars. Could you tell us a little bit about Durio Macranta? Yeah, well, it was. Uh, we had a, a fax sent to us from CSIRO in Darwin, and Dr. Costermans. Uh, he uh, was in in a hospital in in Bogor with a tumor, and he wanted to make sure that. It, he, this variety came into Australia. Anyway, we're fortunate that one of another durian addict from Cairns, John Marshall, was over in Bali, and we managed to contact him, and we got the permits, import permits, all sorted out, and John managed to go and collect some budwood. So the, the durian macrantha we have is the actual, exactly the same tree that Dr. Cosman's had in his in his garden. So, and it's, it was sent to him from some of the lowlands of Sumatra, so saved out of some some reforestation project or something they found it there before. And it's, we had, we put into our, our RDC trial, and um, I think after Cyclone Larry had 15 trees and I think 12 survived. Before Cyclone Larry had 15 trees and after Cyclone Larry there was still 12 trees surviving. So that was pretty, um, pretty where some of the others, like red prawn, it just went down like, it was like tumbleweed rolling around for <laughs> some of the other ones. Well, wow. 297 kilometer hour winds, I mean, it's pretty pretty hard for anything to survive. Really. How tall are yeah. those trees? So oh, the red prawn was up to nine meters or something. Right. So, so got was, nine meter tumbleweeds. That's it, yeah, yeah, so. But, I mean, a lot of the, not only that, the trees didn't only fall down, but they pulled the irrigation out and the roots came out and uh, it was a bit of a disaster. So, mm. but anyway, hopefully yeah. we're, we're back on track now. We're, we're going to be rekindling our, uh, our devotion to durian. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've got these two people who want to keep coming back every year and I've got to have something for them to eat. <laughs> Do you have some hope that the macrantha might be sturdy enough to withstand? Yeah, well, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do this year, I'm going to actually, I've got a, I've kept all the macranthas uh, seed separate. I'm going to actually, because it's more of a dwarf tree, I'm going to actually graft macarantha. The, the original trees were all on zibathinus, so what we're going to do now is graft, I'm going to try some onto macarantha, onto macarantha rootstocks, and I'll hmm. see if I can, I might be able to even um, bring the size down more compact. It might even be might even be a, a even even improvement. Right, so because macrantha tends to be short, right? Yeah, Which is why and it's it a nice open branching sort of tree. Yeah. So, and this year we've had well had two trees with a lot of fruit. Maybe from the two trees we had 45 fruit, and the average weight was 1.2 kilos to maybe 2.1. So it's a pretty good size. Yeah. And we found it was a little more than 20 percent. Flat. Yeah, the recovery was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, and most of the the uh, well, the seed availability certainly stirred up a bit of a hornet's nest on the internet. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, why do you so. think people want macrantha so badly? Well, I suppose it's maybe because we've had it for so long, we don't realise the the uh, the rarity of the of it. You right, know, the uniqueness of it, I suppose. So you're one of, one of just a few people in the world that has it. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, it's, well, we've had it for well, whenever it was brought in, must have been more than ten years ago, I suppose, or twelve. Yeah, it was in the mid '90s. Uh, and actually, there was two lots of budwood come in. One that John Marshall brought in, and then CSIRO went in uh, a couple of weeks later and brought some more budwood in. So, so that really gave us a good start. And what happened to all the other trees of Macrantha? As far, as far as I understand, yours are the only ones left in Australia. Yeah, well, we have given it to a few other people, but I'm not, I haven't checked up um, 
on some of the others, but I think John Marshall's got one in his in his yard at, uh, at in Cairns, and um, but I think we're the only ones with, because they were a bit older. They were the ones that were fruiting, mm. the first lot that were fruiting. So, and can you describe what it tastes like? Well, it's um, not really sweet. It's a uh, well, it's a little bit sweet, but creamy and. And then you just seem to be, it's like KFC, it's sort of, the more you get into it, the, the, the more, then you want to have another piece. It's, it's, it's not a, a strong flavour, not chani, but it's, um, you seem to finish it and then you think, gee, what did that taste like? Then you think, oh, I'll have some more and I'll, I'll see what I'm going to get. Quite. Yeah, it's not offensive. Even <laughs> Lindsay's dad, who hasn't, doesn't have a lot of experience, we kept going for more of them. Yeah, yeah, he ate yeah, a lot of it. It's difficult. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, but you know, it's like, uh, you know, they're really the nicest durians are the ones with that little tiny little firm as you pick up, and then as you, we had one the other day, or not the other day, last year actually, I can still record it was D one six eight. I just put the arrow in my mouth and I just sucked on it, and it was like yogurt. It just mm. sucked straight off the arrow. And the seed came out beautiful and clean, and man, oh. that was a good durian. <laughs> People want to get a hold of some dur some of your durian next year. Yeah, well, they'll have to come at 3 a.m. instead of 4.30 <laughs> <laughs> And in, in case uh, you're not in enough trouble from these durian addicts, um, <laughs> I want people to know Alan also grows the best Champadoc I've ever oh. had. Oh, it's true. Oh. So good, you if uh, orange, that, it can rival a durian for oh, sure. Oh, that orange Champadoc, it's deep orange. It's it's amazing. It is actually amazing that Champadoc. It's it'd have to be the best Champadoc I've ever tasted. I think it's amazing. So maybe come at 3:30 a.m. for the Champadoc. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and come back at five for the for the Macran. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks very much. Thanks for all the durian. Honey. Yeah, no props. You just have a safe trip around the place, all right, and look after yourselves.